12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hello, good morning. It is Tuesday. It is April 7th. Hello, Leslie. Oh, hello, Mr. Austin. Hi. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you very much. Good to be here. Oh, we're glad to have you back. How was your move? <laughs> oh, it stunk. I've, I was telling uh, people on Facebook over the weekend, I've never in all my years of moving had to move during downpours, I mean thunderstorms, and I know it happens all the time, but. Well, thank goodness you hired a moving company and you didn't have to load everything on the back of a truck and you actually got it to go into an enclosed truck. The truck had a leak, oh. so they had to move boxes out, bring another truck, load boxes back in, but I've never seen movers move so fast with dollies and boxes. They earned their tip for sure. Wow, well, I'm glad that you're back. It's, I'm glad it's all done. It's good to be back and have something semi-normal you know, going on here, and that's your shining face across the desk. Aw, thank you. Well, this Welcome. one, this talker this morning isn't what you'd call normal, but it is pretty fantastic. It's pretty cool because, uh, you know, everybody's doing this uh, teleconferencing, Zoom videos, things like that. Virtual cocktail parties, catch yeah. up with friends and family, all yeah. that kind of stuff. Well, how about virtual bingo with a super duper star? Mr. All right, all right, all right, all Matthew right. McConaughey, the Dallas Spires Club star, recently joined residents of a senior living facility up in Round Rock. Yeah, this is Enclave at Round Rock Senior Living in Texas. He had a rousing game night over Zoom, and he wasn't the only one. As you can see here, his wife, Camilla, his mom, and, his, and two of his three kids joined as well. The uh, senior VP of Sales and Marketing for Spectrum Retirement told Good Morning America, the generosity and kindness that Matthew McConaughey and his family showed our residents was beautiful, but more importantly, we were gifted with a humble message from his heart. It's so sweet. And he, they said, for that, we'll be forever grateful. And the video posted that you're seeing here, the Oscar winner can be heard calling out the numbers, namely I-24, as two seniors, Richard and Charles, say bingo! And on the Enclave Senior Facilities Facebook page, they go, hey, thank you, Matthew, his wife, Camilla, and his mom, Kay, for hosting our residents. A few rounds of virtual bingo. Our residents had a great time playing, and they loved talking with Matthew about his family heritage and his favorite drink. But, you know, I can hear Matthew McConaughey in my head. I haven't watched, I haven't heard the video. I've only seen it. Right. But I can hear him calling out numbers. Ah, 24. I can, too. And I'm just putting it out there, not that he's watching right now, but if he would like to do the same for my family, we would happily have him call bingo numbers for our family, too. For your family. That's so cute. You mean you. Yeah, I mean me. Okay. Let's take a look at you right now. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says the number of COVID-19 deaths in the U.S. may be higher than its count. The CDC says that's due to two main reasons. This information usually lags a week or two, and some may be misclassified as pneumonia deaths. President Donald Trump is wishing British Prime Minister Boris Johnson well wishes as he remains in intensive care at a London hospital due to COVID-19. He was taken to the hospital on Sunday, but was moved to an ICU after his condition worsened. Dr. Pat Patrick Borden says 80% of the patients at his Brooklyn hospital are infected with coronavirus. I made rounds up on the eighth floor of the hospital and it looks like a war zone. Local police and psychologists are preparing for a possible increase in suicide calls as the pandemic continues. Officials say the uncertainty over the pandemic, such as when it will end, and the level of isolation can take a toll on people mentally. Mayor Ron Nierberg is recommending that everyone wear face masks when they go out in public. He announced it last night during his daily press conference. ESPN reports Major League Baseball is working on a plan to start the season as early as next month with all 32 teams playing in Arizona. A Michigan woman is living through her second global pandemic. Oral Borgeson turns 103 next week. She was a baby during the 1918 flu pandemic. Little Caesars is donating 1 million pizzas to first responders in the next few weeks. The pizza chain says the food will be donated to hospitals, police departments, and fire departments. Put on your mask when you go out in public. We're all familiar with the term essential workers, but officials in New Zealand want to clarify the term is not just doctors and grocery store workers. New Zealand has added the Easter Bunny to that list, as well as you can't forget the Tooth Fairy. Essential. Absolutely essential. Let's check outside, see if it's cleared up at all. It was not a very nice start to the day today. It's getting a little better. A little better. We, we looked there at live cam as we looked down on Central Catholic, and it looks like visibility is improving, at least here downtown. And I think we're going to steadily see visibility improve around here. We started off with a lot of fog this morning. You know that if you've been outside, visibility 
Still low on a few spots, especially as you get out towards Uvalde and Hondo here in San Antonio at the airport, about a mile and a half visibility, so not uh, too horrible. Forecast for today, up around 86 degrees for a high. We'll call it partly sunny. I do think we'll see some sun today. We could be talking about a heat index this afternoon because we've got the humidity and we'll have the heat probably today and uh, tomorrow we'll be dealing with that. Pollen count is in. Oak, right about where it was yesterday, 2000. Uh, it's in the high category. Mold is moderate. It's come down a little bit. Mulberry and pecan both in the low category. Temperatures at this hour right around 70 degrees. Again, it will be a warm one. 84 by 3 o'clock, 86 by 5 o'clock. Can't rule out a stray shower storm today, but I don't think that's uh, likely at all. Southeast Julie winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Now, tomorrow, rain chances do start to increase a little bit. And as we get into Thursday, they really jump up. We'll talk about that forecast here in just a couple minutes. Guys? Thank you, Justin. There's 35 upper and lower levels at Brooklyn, 410 at Fredericksburg. A little jittery there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Top stories that we're following for you today. Police are still looking for two suspects after they crashed their car into a home on the north side. All this happened just off of Blanco in the 1300 block of Vista Del Monte just after 2.30 this morning. Officers tell us the two men ran off after they crashed into the home. Police say they were going about 50 miles an hour when they crashed. No injuries were reported. And this morning we continue to follow the impact of the coronavirus pandemic and the impact it's having here in Bear County. They just confirm amount of cases sits at 456. Let's look at how some of those numbers break down. City officials say 115 are travel related, 139 are community transmitted, 153 close contact cases and 49 are under investigation. A dozen people have died here from the disease while 77 have fully recovered. In regards to other counties surrounding us, Guadalupe County has reported 39 cases of COVID-19. Comal has reported 22 confirmed cases. If you have any questions about specific numbers in your area, we do have an interactive map. You can explore it right now on KSAT.com. Well, the San Antonio Food Bank is still in need of volunteers for its upcoming food distribution event. The Food Bank held another mega distribution event this morning. They have another one coming up Thursday. The food distributions are done through pre-registration only. They allow people to get help without leaving the safety of their cars. Food Bank needs volunteers to help sort and distribute food. If you'd like to volunteer for Thursday's distribution, go to safoodbank.org. And in your morning headlines, more tragedy for the Kennedy family. Voters are at the polls in Wisconsin for their primary. Wild animals finding new places to hang out since humans are staying in. And some fun video of kittens and fish, which Aww. is a win-win situation, David oh, yeah. Sears. Well, yeah, they can't get to the fish, but they're well, enjoying. But they can out look at them. Fish. They can look at the fish. Yes. So that's the key. All right. Hey, the body of granddaughter of Robert F. Kennedy has been found by divers off the coast of Maryland. Maeve Kennedy Townsend McKean has been missing for several days after she went canoeing with her eight-year-old son Gideon. The 41-year-old McKean was found in 25 feet of water, about two and a half miles from her family home in Shadyside, Maryland. That's east of Washington, D.C., just south of Baltimore, right there on the bay. Her son still missing. Teams will continue to search for him today. Interesting day in Wisconsin, the state under a stay-at-home order while they're also holding their primary. The polls are open, so they are trying to balance the two. The governor of the state tried to halt the primary and move it to June. He even tried an executive order, but no go. State Supreme Court shut it down, and the U.S. Supreme Court ruled against an idea to extend absentee voting six days, so they are doing what they can to protect workers. There are voters in line with and without masks. Workers at polling stations are wearing the masks. There are shields protecting workers. The National Guard has also been called up to help out. The results may not be known tonight. That may not happen until around April 13th because of an apparent court ruling. While there are so many people staying at home, there seems to be more open spaces outdoors. For example, animals love to roam, and that is a herd of elk that you saw just a second ago hanging out on a football field in Golden, Colorado. There they are. Look at all those guys just hanging out. Might as well take up the room. No football players. Colorado Parks and Wildlife said animals adapt to our behavior. A lot of folks are hitting hiking trails for daily walks, so animals move around to not so crowded places like those trails. As we continue to slow down or avoid uh, certain areas, then it's absolutely logical that wildlife could use those spaces if it provides everything that they need, uh, food, shelter, and water. Looks like an offensive line right there, doesn't it? They say it's too early to tell if Colorado's stay-at-home order has impacted wildlife habits just yet. 
While there are many warnings to socially distance on local trails, this goes to all of us here in San Antonio and Bear and surrounding counties to admire wildlife safely from a distance, meaning never try to get too close or touch the wild animals. And being home more often may mean you'll spot something in your neighborhood. Hey, the Georgia Aquarium close to humans, but not the fellow kittens. Look at those little guys. The Atlanta Humane Society took some kittens for a visit to hang out with the fishes. So meet Nemo, Guppy, Marlin, Bubbles, and Dory. They're all up for adoption. They're Still trying to have, get those. Yeah, fish, look at they? them. They're, they're going to just watch them dart around. That's There's cool. still really no evidence that pets can spread COVID-19. So the humane societies are encouraging to adopt pets if you uh, if you so choose. So there you go. Uh, David, I have to call you out real quick. Uh oh, what do I do now? I have nothing to do with this. You have nothing to do with Here this, Mark. Yesterday on the show, uh -huh. I was filling in for you, yes. uh -huh. and we were talking about uh, Netflix releasing a new episode of Tiger King. Yeah. And he got the soapbox out and. <laughs> Stood on it and said he's his goal is to never watch one single episode of that. Oh, episode. not even the original. Not one single ever. Not okay. one ever. He sits down today and says, my son said, Dad, you really need to watch that. <laughs> so now what's he doing? He's watching watch Tiger King. I, I had not watched it yet, so we'll see. Okay. Maybe, I don't know. I don't and this know. bonus episode is now out for Tiger King? Yeah. It's not out. No, no, no. Okay. I just heard did, about it. They, so. they have announced that Netflix yeah. shot one, but Netflix has not said when they're releasing it. Okay. Between you and my son, and the peer pressure is breaking me down. Yeah. I, just, it just, I just might collapse under this. You need peer to just pressure. collapse and just accept it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our director said, "Stay strong. Don't strong. watch. Don't, I don't know. It's, oh, gonna have, it's getting, getting harder. Have to get the soapbox it's, out again. Uh, <laughs> it's crazy TV. <laughs> yep, that's yep. what I understand. That's yep. what they're all saying. So, mm -hmm. I don't know. thank you, you might David. Check it out. Thanks, Thanks David. David. All right. <laughs> Next up, uh, documentary with you, Tiger Queen. Oh no 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 no. That's a no. That's just a rumor. Okay. Not oh, true. Oh, is it? You just started it. <laughs> 9 10 right now, 69 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. Since you can't go to the movie theater, new movies are coming to you. A preview of the two major films now available on home video. San Antonio's Mayor Ron Nirenberg recommending anyone over the age of five wear a face covering while in public. Tips on how to make your own coming up later in the newscast. And just because you're staying home doesn't mean you can't work on your skills. Oh, just a little bit off. After the break, what the Spurs are doing to step up and help out. Checking the stock market, it's doing well today, up 641 points at 23,335. a lot and the short answer is that there is no data to support that ibuprofen can worsen COVID-19 symptoms. This question came about after France's health ministry suggested on social media that popular anti-inflammatory painkillers could worsen the effects of COVID-19. But this warning was quickly questioned by major health agencies and regulators. The World Health Organization and other leading agencies now say there is no evidence to support the suggestion that ibuprofen might worsen the symptoms of COVID-19. If you have a question, keep sending them in. Go to ksat.com and you can also sign up for our SAQ newsletter by going to ksat.com slash newsletter. As the stay home work safe order is in place, the Spurs are stepping up, helping out and doing what they can to help kids stay active. Mr. Max Massey joins us live. Max, what are the Spurs doing and what are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> like mask. Hey guys, I have been actually working on my game throughout the morning, hence the sweat and the mask really making me worse. That's what I'm going to blame for missing the shot in the tees. But anyway, the Spurs have the Spurs Sports Academy, letting kids work on their games from home. We are joined by Austin from the Spurs. So Austin, what is the point of this app? Yeah, so we uh, are partnered with Bology, um, where people can download the app free of charge, um, and we give them different drills, competitions, um, and skills to work on throughout the week. Now, what are some of these competitions? So this past week, we did a bank challenge uh, using the Using the backboard, of course, 30 seconds, see how many you can make. This next week, we're going to work on our layups right and left hand for okay. speed. Now, the bank challenge was in honor of Tim Duncan. It was. Well, <laughs> it, it happened before, but it, go figure, it was right after uh, he got announced. Yes, All right, now, one of the things you were emphasizing was working on your game without a hoop. What are some things that kids can do right Absolutely. now? Absolutely. Easiest drill we can do is working on our ball handling, right? Everybody needs to improve it, um, try to get better at it. So, you want to show some drills? I'm gonna try. All right. So, blame the mask if anything goes so we'll have our feet shoulder width apart. Just small, basic things. We're gonna work on our right hand. Ten hard dribbles to our waist. All right. So, 
Now, don't be looking at the ground though. Keep our eyes up, right? All right, left hand. Switch to our left hand. All right, then crossovers, back and forth. Looking down is really difficult. And it's Not the hard part, right? Just... Right? We can work on it. All right, good. So after we're done, we're always two claps. We gotta give you, you gotta two claps. It. There you go. Yeah, killing it. All right, guys, that is just a small preview. We're gonna have much more coming up at 9.30. Mark? Leslie. Nicely done, Mr. Max. Max has moves. Yesterday it was Music Max. Today it's Max with the moves. Yeah. What else could he do? Never mind. Don't answer that. <laughs> Thanks, Max. <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh, bring Justin into this. He's a big basketball guy. Yeah, but I played with Max a couple times. He's uh, he's broken my ankles, man. He does have a crossover there. Ooh. He's, uh, he's out there. He's, Good to know. That says a lot coming from you. Yeah, but I can still shoot over the top of him. I so bet we're, you can. <laughs> we're okay. Uh, guys, we got a, a cool shot this morning from space. This is uh, Dragon 1. This is a SpaceX craft. It just departed from the International Space Station. Uh, this was some, or at least a picture of it a little bit earlier as it was doing so. It's expected to crash down into the Pacific, but 1.50 our time today is going to bring back a trove of scientific experiments and uh, a pretty big deal there as it uh, comes back to Earth. But that uh, just departed about an hour ago, in fact, and we uh, got that picture in from NASA. Let's take a look at the time lapse. A lot of fog out there. And uh, we can see that it was pretty thick earlier. We're starting to see some improvement now, just within the last hour. Watch how quickly that happens. Of course, we're time lapsing here, so uh, it looks a lot quicker than it actually happens. But uh, we're starting to see again some improvement. 69 degrees, dew point is at 68. South southwest Julie winds at about three miles per hour. There's a look at your visibility down about a mile and a half in town. Three quarters of a mile, Port SA, still very poor visibility out towards Castroville and about a mile and three quarters there in Pleasanton. Let's check in on some of the trans guy pictures. That looks pretty good. That's 90 a couples, not a problem there. Uh, and uh, 10 at West looks pretty good there too. So again, I think across town we're going to see these visibilities really start to come up. The satellite picture shows still quite a bit of cloud cover. We didn't see a whole lot of sun yesterday. There was some there, but not a lot. I think we'll see a bit more today. Temperatures are already warm near 70 degrees here around Bear County. And then as you get out west, there already are some breaks. 69 Del Rio with a little bit of sun there this morning. 69 in Uvalde, 70 in Carrizo Springs and some pretty warm stuff across our eastern counties too. Dense fog advisory in effect for about another 45 minutes or so. That does include Bear County. And look at the dew points. They're so high. So it stands to reason we got the fog this morning. The moisture really surged in here. Two points in the 60s and now mid 70s. So not only are we going to have heat today, we may actually be talking about a heat index. It's been a little bit since we talked about heat indices, but I think they'll be around today. Maybe we tack on a degree or two to our actual temperature. 89 is what it may feel like this afternoon here in San Antonio. Some 90s out west. Doppler radar isn't showing us much. We've got a couple of very light returns down there around Katua. That's it. We're not looking for much rain today, but there is an upper level low out to the west. This is going to be working in our direction slowly but surely as we get towards the weekend. So we've got a couple of chances of rain here, and you see the steady dose of high cloudiness. We'll continue to get some of that today, too. So here's what the future cast looks like. Well, let's jump into tomorrow, because today I don't think we see much. Tomorrow afternoon, 5 o'clock, we've got showers and storms developing. And I think this just isolated stuff. This may be overdoing it just a little bit, about a 20% chance. But if we do see some showers and storms tomorrow, they have the potential to be on the stronger side. I think Thursday is our better day for rain. We get a funnel boundary in here. That should enhance our rain chances. Thursday, we could see a couple strong storms too. And uh, even into Friday, we'll have some more rain chances. Saturday too. But by Easter Sunday, it's looking pretty good. So the forecast improves, and we've got some good news in that regard. Temperatures today up around 86 for a high. Southeast Julie winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then tomorrow, 89. 20% chance of rain, but a 60% chance Thursday. 40% chance for Good Friday. Probably cloudy, too. 50% chance of some storms on Saturday. But it clears out. 79 Sunday, mostly sunny. And next week, looks like we're going to get a pretty good front. We could see temperatures for high temperatures back in the 60s on Monday. Guys. Thank you, Justin. 920, 69 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9, two new movies are available to stream from, your, from the comfort of your own home, and we have a preview of both coming up after the break. 923, the coronavirus pandemic has changed a lot of things around the world, including how new movies are released. Instead of going to the movie theater, some major movies are coming to you. CNN's David Daniel looks at what's landing today on Home Video. 
This is Meg, Amy, Beth, and Joe. Little Women leads a trio of big movies onto DVD and Blu-ray, with a half dozen bonus features about the Oscar-winning adaptation of the Louisa May Alcott classic. Another remake, Doolittle, starring Robert Downey Jr., also arrives on disc this week, as does another adaptation, the controversial Cats. If we've opened up our own store, we're winning. We're $493,000 in debt. Like a Boss leads the parade of picks arriving on digital platforms. Rose Byrne, Tiffany Haddish, and Salma Hayek star in the business world comedy. If you're looking for drama, the last full measure is based on the true story of a U.S. Air Force medic who saved more than 60 men in Vietnam and the decades-long effort to honor him properly. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. That looks good. I want to see Little Women. I want to see both of them. Yeah, me too. San Antonio, if you did not know, was a second home for Tejano star Selena Quintanilla. She played at many venues here, and a lot of the scenes from the movie were actually shot here as well. You can even take a tour of all these sites. We have a map up on KSAT.com right now where they're all located. From the location of her Broadway boutique to Market Square, where Selena y Los Dinos, Dinos played during Fiesta. It's crazy because we used to play Fiesta Week, and obviously everybody knows Fiesta Week is free. But when we would step on that stage and we would, right outside of Mitera, and we would see that crowd just lined up, we thought that was the world. To hear more from A. B. Quintanilla and other members of Selena's band, watch our one-hour special, special rather, Siempre Selena, Sunday, 9 p.m. It may be a welcome distraction from our current world situation. Amen. 925, still 69 degrees. Google Maps is now highlighting restaurants offering takeout or delivery amid the coronavirus pandemic. Details in your tech and business briefing from Cheddar. Some states starting to see signs of hope that maybe social distancing is finally helping, helping rather to flatten the curve. CNN's Whitney Wild live with the latest on the government's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. And San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberg is asking everyone to wear a mask when they go outside, but he says you should not use medical masks, wear cloth ones instead. Tips on how to make your own coming up next. And as we go to break, quick check of the roads with TransSky I-35 and Evans Road. No problems there, nor at 35 upper and lower levels down here by KSAT near Brooklyn. Starting today, San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberg is recommending that anyone over the age of five wear a cloth mask or face covering while in public. RJ Marquez shows us some simple face coverings that you can make at home in this week's Adulting Hacks. There has been a major shortage of medical grade face masks across the country since the pandemic started. Now, healthcare workers, people on the front lines, first responders should absolutely get these face masks, but there are alternatives for you to make some at home and keep yourself protected if you have to be outdoors. The CDC has a section dedicated to making a homemade face mask or cloth covering as they call it online. Here's what you should know. The coverings should fit snugly, but comfortably against the side of the face. Make sure the coverings are secure with hair ties or ear loops, here's an example with a bandana. Next thing, include multiple layers of fabric and allow for breathing without restriction. Some types of fabric to look for include tightly woven cotton, such as quilting fabric or cotton sheets. A t-shirt fabric will also work. Joanne Stores has tutorials on their site and their rule of thumb is that if you fold the fabric in two layers, you shouldn't be able to see through it, but you should still be able to breathe through it. A few more things. Make sure the covering can be laundered and machine dried without damage or change to shape. Also, be careful not to touch your eyes, nose, and mouth when removing the face covering and wash your hands immediately after it's removed. Removed. Again, the CDC has several ways that you can make a face covering using a sewing machine or different sewing methods. But if you don't have that or you don't have any hair ties, one of the most convenient and easiest ways includes a pair of scissors, a ruler, and an old t-shirt. Cut seven to eight inches up from the bottom of the shirt and then about seven inches from that section. Remember, if the shirt's bigger, then you may have to cut a little bit more. And finally, cut the tie strings to tie around the top of your head and neck. Making a face covering is not a replacement for social distancing. Those guidelines are still in place. This is just an added layer of protection if you have to go outside or go to the store. I'm RJ Marcus. To see more stories like this, watch KSAT News at 9, Monday through Friday. Live cam giving us another look outside. That's Central Catholic, isn't it? Right across the street from mm -hmm. Those are our neighbors. Mm -hmm. 
very empty right now. And there are mornings when we can't see our neighbors because of fog <laughs> is so true. thick. Good news, we can see them now. The uh, the fog is starting to clear up. We're seeing that in some of our pictures too. Take a look at this KSAC Connect picture. The fog was there a little bit earlier. Rob sent this in, Rob95. Uh, Texas Ag, it looks like, and we've got some clearing skies there on the right, showing that the fog is trying to uh, clear up some as uh, you look at the tower there. Uh, visibility in miles around Bear County, we're talking about a mile visibility about por around Port SA, mile and a half the airport, uh, up to a quarter of a mile down Castroville. That, that is still low visibility, but it's better than what it was last uh, time we looked. It's close to zero. Hondo also seeing some pretty thick fog. Temperatures up around 70 degrees right now. 70 at Randolph, 71 in Floresville, 72 in New Braunfels. And the forecast for today up to 86. There is an outside chance for shower or storm, but it is very low, only 10%. Southeast Julie winds will be light. We'll see some sun this afternoon and even warmer temperatures tomorrow with the threat of a few storms. We'll have more on that in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. 35 at uh, Brooklyn downtown looking great. 410 at Fredericksburg. Light traffic in both directions. Well, schools, gyms, and community basketball courts are closed, but there are still easy ways your kids can work on their basketball skills. Indeed, the Spurs Sports Academy teamed up with the Bology app to host virtual camps. Max Massey joins us now. Max, let's talk more about this. Oh, app. you show, show up. Show, yeah, Look uh, at you. You read my, my yeah. <laughs> that was it. That was the only shot I'm making today. Uh, no, the app is really awesome. It's easy to use and it is super user friendly. And the app really helps with drills and it, it helps if people are out and about and you don't need to be on a court to do it. We are joined here, Austin of the Spurs Sports Academy. So Austin, why are you guys doing this? Uh, biggest reason to help kids. Kids are at home, st stuck inside. Um, so one big thing is to get them out and work on their skills, um, compete a little bit, have fun at the same time. Okay, and so you guys have the competitions on the apps. What was last week's competition? So last week's competition was the bank challenge. Um, we had 30 seconds. You start on the left side from about four or five feet away. Um, as many as you can, alternating spots, uh, getting it done. Give us, Wanna give see us, a few? I'm gonna, I'm gonna right. interview you while you start. Right. Oh. So we sit here, we're looking top left corner of the backboard, we're shooting, getting your own rebound. Again, this is as quick as you can. So uh, as back as and, you can. <laughs> as quick as you can. Back and forth um, for 30 seconds. I believe our winner last week uh, made nine, which is a very, very good score. Wow, and it's there's no age limit for this, right? No, anybody can do it. That's the best thing about this, uh, you and me, um, but also kids all the way down to five or six years old can do this as well. Full honesty, before the live shot, Austin and I did this, and he beat me by at least three shots. <laughs> we don't need to talk about that. But it's not just courts, because obviously not everyone has access to a hoop. You also have drills that you can do without it. Correct, yeah, so one big thing is we give out workouts throughout the week. Uh, for these kids to work on at home. Um, right here, we're on the driveway, basketball, so we do a lot of ball handling drills as well. Um, and later on, throughout this competition, um, they'll get ball handling uh, challenges as well to work on. All right, and there's also prizes. There are prizes at the end of the week. Got to compete to tell us. and post your video, um, and then we have a winner every week. Awesome, awesome, thank you so yep. much. Thank you, so guys, never excuse not to work on your skills. Let's see, last one for the, for the road. Oh, oh. Need to work a little bit fail. Mark. Just <laughs> and now it rolls into exactly. the street. Oh, that's okay, Max. I love everything it is it is. about this. I love John Krasinski. Yeah. I love what he's doing. And who doesn't love the uh, musical Hamilton? Hamilton. Okay, so we showed you what Matthew McConaughey is doing. Right. This is another just feel good, great thing to do. Another Zoom enabled story. So John Krasinski, as you may know from The Office, also has done a number of movies now. Uh, he's doing a online or web talk show called uh, Good News, right? Yeah, some good, some good news. Some good news. So here's SGM. the thing. He made a Hamilton fans day when he Zoomed with a nine-year-old girl. Her name is Aubrey. She was very disappointed when the tour performance of Hamilton that she was supposed to see was canceled, of course, due to COVID-19. So he revealed on the fly that he was going to fly mom and Aubrey to New York to see Hamilton mm -hmm. when Broadway is back to normal. Things are back to normal. And then he surprised her with his wife showed up. Yeah, Mary Poppins, of course, returns the, the, the star. Emily Blunt. Emily Blunt. Mm -hmm. She jumps in it, too. And while they were jokingly together, Zooming with her about everything in it, the creator of the star himself popped up via Zoom, surprised her, but not just him, the whole cast. The whole cast. And when you bring together the cast of Hamilton, what are they going to do? Let's show them. Alexander Hamilton, 
My name is Alexander Hamilton And there's a million things I haven't done But just you wait, just you wait When he was ten, his father split full of it Alex got better, but his mother went quick Moved in with the cousin, the cousin committed suicide You gotta fend for yourself Started retreating and reading every treatise on the shelf And sugar cane and rum and Everyone from the original cast did this for her. She was clearly stunned as she watched and cheered when it was over. This is on our website, KSAT.com. The video has gone viral. And how did they even harmonize in real time? I mean, I'd assume there'd maybe be some lag in there. I mean, it was amazing. They had to have practiced, right? Or they've just, they're so good and professional because they've done it so many times. They're that good. But we've seen that the symphonies get together and do it to put, you know, put on performances and different groups. I love it. It's Absolutely changed the world it. in a great way. And thank you again to John Kersen for some good news. And Cute Aubrey, little talk show. You and your family will still get to see the show as soon as all this is behind She's us. She's not going to miss her shot. Nope. Right now, 938, 69 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. There's been a lot of drama over the Navy's response to the coronavirus, especially on the USS Theodore Roosevelt. After the break, CNN's Whitney Wilde joins us live to break down the latest. But first, let's check in with our friends over at Cheddar. One, this is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. American Airlines joining United and JetBlue in reducing the number of flights at a New York area airport. This is the city braces for its worst week yet since the coronavirus outbreak began. Now, altogether, airlines have slashed more than 90% of their flights to New York City. Between April the 9th and May the 6th, American will operate just 13 flights a day out of JFK, LaGuardia, and Newark. Meanwhile, Clippy's launched off to a rough start with many users reporting hour-long outages on the app. During the outage, some users saw error screens while some were un unable to even create an account. Quibi, not the only streaming platform to crash on its launch day. Disney Plus also had experienced similar outages on its premiere day this past November. And Google Maps now highlighting restaurants offering takeout or delivery amidst the coronavirus pandemic. This is food delivery growing in popularity as many states enforce stay-at-home orders. Some restaurants will allow you to order within the Google app. The feature is currently only available in the U.S., but Google hopes to launch in other markets soon. And that's a Cheddar Business to Tech update. I'm Baker Machado from New York City. Nine forty-three. Welcome back to Good Morning San Antonio. Nine. The COVID nineteen pandemic far from under control here in the U.S., but some states are seeing signs of hope that maybe social distancing is helping to flatten the curve. CNN's Whitney Well joins us live from Washington D.C. with the latest. Good morning, Whitney. Good morning to you. Well, there is encouraging news. The administration, the top uh, scientists on the coronavirus task force are commending Americans for what they are calling unprecedented mitigation efforts. And this is really critical because they say that those efforts, as difficult as they are, are working. They are possibly bringing that death toll down from a high of 240,000 deaths across the United States to below 100,000 deaths. So very encouraging news as we unfortunately start to hit the peak of this coronavirus death toll here in the United States over this week and next. Whitney, let's talk a little bit about the drama uh, over the U.S. Navy's response to the coronavirus on board the USS Theodore Roosevelt. What's the latest with that aircraft carrier and the change of command there and also the, the blowback from the uh, interim secretary of the Navy? Yeah, this has been a huge story out of the Navy. So the background story here is that the commander of that ship had had disseminated a memo to between 20 and 30 people demanding, essentially, urging the Navy to take serious action with regard to protecting the health of the sailors on that ship. He simply said, look, we're not at war. There's no reason for these sailors to be put in any kind of danger. So the Navy needs to act and act quickly to protect sailors against coronavirus. This memo went out to so many people that it prompted the Navy to say, look, we think you disseminated this memo to too many people and actually removed the commander from his position, saying that they felt like he went outside the chain of command of the Navy and, in effect, really displayed poor judgment, judgment not of the caliber of the kind of person they think should be running a, a ship of that magnitude. So that's the first part of it. 
in addition, the rebuke of him was really scathing. That acting secretary of the Navy said that he was either too naive or too stupid to know that disseminating that memo to that many people would eventually ensure that it would make its way into the public domain. He eventually, though, walked those comments back, saying that he, he actually doesn't think that. He doesn't think he's naive. He doesn't think that he's uh, stupid. But he did say, and this is another scathing rebuke, that he is convinced that the commander of this ship is very, very bright and should have known and likely did know that sending out that memo to so many people would ensure that it would make its way into the public domain. All right, President Trump yesterday blasted a report from the Human Health and Services Department that says there are critical supply shortages at hospitals around the country, so why? Well, he's he's suggesting that that report is untrue. So the the report basically surveyed 300, 323 hospitals across the country to ask them how the, how it's going in their fight against coronavirus. And the top criticisms that the hospitals lobbed against the administration were inconsistent or unclear guidance, severe shortages of medical supplies. So those are the two biggest challenges facing hospitals. When presented with this information that was released by his own administration, the president said that's not true and, and suggested or at least wondered aloud if this was a, a politically motivated response, uh, politically motivated criticism. Um, over coming days, I think we'll learn a little bit more about how the administration is going to respond to those criticisms. But uh, yeah, at, at least for now, presenting a challenge to the president is his own administration releasing this really scathing report from uh, from the hospitals on the ground. All right, CNN's Whitney Wild joining us live from Washington. Thank you, Whitney. Stay safe, and we'll talk to you again very, very soon. Let's switch gears and talk to our meteorologist who's going to introduce us to future meteorologists. Real quick, though, I do want to mention something, and I mentioned this to Justin. We just got a press release from the uh, state um, Texas Parks and Wildlife. Mm -hmm. At the direction of Governor Abbott today, the uh, Texas Park Service announced that they were going to be closing all state parks at the public, uh, be closed to the public effective at close of business today. Uh, in order to maintain the safest environment, visitors, volunteers, and staff. So again, state parks closing uh, for the foreseeable future, effective close of business Not today. Not really surprising. No. It was kind of a down the pike. We knew it was probably going to happen. Right. Uh, well, you can't go to the park, but you can be a meteorologist if you're a child it's and we true. can put you on TV. It's true. Those kiddos are stuck in sight, so we're trying to give them something to do. A little bit of science here. We've got some junior meteorologists today. We're going to listen to five-year-old Bryce. He's a dual-language student. Take a listen. Hola, estima de hoy es soleado y ventoso. Y el clima, el clima de mañana será lluvioso con tormentas. Adiós. Uh, very, nice. very nicely done. Yes, his mom said this was a great way for him to practice his Spanish as well. Did a great job, Bryce. Awesome. Keep those videos coming in every Yes, we've got a few more this week. We'll be happy to show you. Let's go outside now and show you what's going on there. We've got uh, some fog starting to lift. Visibility is getting better as we look out over the airport. Temperature right now, 69 degrees. Dew point is at 68. South southwesterly wind at about three miles per hour. So the wind's still pretty light. This was a good setup for fog. So I'm not surprised that we saw some pretty thick fog and still are seeing some of that, especially as you get out into Medina County. So if you're traveling along Highway 90 or plan to travel, uh, the, the fog is very thick there. Visibility is down, still down to about a quarter of a mile. Here around town, though, uh, we continue to see some pretty uh, clear shots here on our trans guide. Uh, 35 and Brooklyn there looks pretty good, as does 410 and Fredericksburg. Uh, let's take a look at the cloud cover. It's uh, pretty thick right now. We've still got some of those low clouds. And we've got some high clouds streaming over top of that. Now, I do think we'll see some sun tomorrow. Yesterday, or I do think we'll see some sun today. Yesterday, we didn't see a whole lot. Uh, but we saw a couple peaks here and there. Uh, today we should see a little bit more, and that should boost temperatures some. 69 degrees at the airport, 70 at Randolph, 72 in New Braunfels, 68 right now in Seguin. And as you get out west, there are some breaks. Rock Springs, you're seeing some clears, guys. 70 degrees there, 70 in Del Rio right now, and dew points are way up there. So we're closing in on 70 here in town. That's when you start to get into that oppressive category. Step up from muggy. It's no fun. Um, we'll see this through the day. Now, these numbers will come down a little bit this afternoon, but I think there's enough there where we could be talking about a heat index today. 
Yes, high temperatures will be in the mid 80s, but we may have to tack on a degree or two uh, with that thick humidity. So it may feel like 89 here in town this afternoon. We may get some feels like temperatures in the mid 90s down to the south and west. So a little more summer like today. Doppler radar isn't showing much. In fact, uh, we're getting the all clear. I'm not looking for much to show up today. It's probably tomorrow where we have a slightly better chance of an isolated shower or storm. This is six o'clock today and the computer model is not showing us anything here. Now as we get to uh, tomorrow, this is five o'clock. I do think we could see an isolated shower or storm pop up. It'll be few and far between. But if we do see something show up tomorrow, it has the potential to be strong. So we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, long term here, let's go to Thursday. This is Thursday morning. We'll see a frontal boundary starting to shift in and that's going to pick up our rain chances Thursday afternoon. I think this is probably our best window for rain. In here we could see a couple of strong storms as well with this frontal boundary in place. Even on Friday we'll have some rain chances and some rain chances on Saturday too. Severe weather risk tomorrow. It's a marginal risk on a scale of one to five. We're talking about a one here and just because it's going to be few and far between. We're just not expecting a whole lot of coverage, but if anything does pop up, we'll let you know. 86 degrees, the high temperature today. Southeasterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. We'll call it partly sunny. 20% uh, chance of rain tomorrow. 60% chance on Thursday. Cloudy with a 40% chance of rain Friday. Some more thunderstorms on Saturday, and then it clears out for Easter Sunday. Looking good. 79 degrees and mostly sunny. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Well, let's look at the forecast. 86 degrees today. Some sun this afternoon. A chance of some storms tomorrow. Better chance on Thursday. And we'll see some pretty nice weather by the time we get to Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday. Apparently, we have been all calculating doggy years all wrong. Your dog is not what you, the age you think your dog is, apparently. No, and I'm doing the math right now, so. <laughs> <laughs> this is really difficult. It scares though. me. Okay, calculating how old your dog is, it used to be, you know, the same as we've always said, it's multiply their lives by seven, and you have, right? Dog years. Dog yeah. years. Right. That's not true anymore. Nope. Uh, geneticists at University of California, San Diego, scanned a particular DNA patterns of genomes of 104 dogs between four weeks and 16 years and focused on Labrador retrievers and f realized we've been doing it wrong. Yeah, analysis showed dogs have tested, uh, dogs tested have similar age-related changes. Basically, they're closer to humans than we think as far as living conditions and lifespans and things like that. Okay, so well, here's the new formula. It takes the natural logarithm of the dog's real age, multiplies yeah. it by 16, then adds 31. Okay, got it. Okay, I so don't Mark. understand this at all. So Ooh. Truman is 10, so that one means in the old way he was 70. Right. And now it's 10 times 16 equals 160 plus 31. How is what? that possible? He's 191. <laughs> Truman's going to live forever. Our country is barely older <laughs> than my dog. <laughs> Not